Well, today, California will celebrate the woman who fought for the rights of farm workers for decades and has continued to advocate for others ever since. It is Dolores Huerta Day. 23 ABC's Alyssa Flores sat down with Huerta to talk about her life and legacy that led to this recognition. She's the woman behind the iconic chant still heard across the country today. For decades, Dolores Huerta's life of activism has sparked change, but not without controversy. We had no choice. We had to keep on going forward. Co-founder of the National Farm Workers Association, which would later become the United Farm Workers, Huerta worked alongside Cesar Chavez for the rights of farm workers throughout the country. Huerta says her passion for activism came early on. In my family, I think that was kind of a tradition that you, you had to be involved in the community. As a school teacher in Stockton, it was there that Huerta said she saw the impact educators could make. They can either inspire them or they can put them down. Which she says inspired her to change course. I saw that not all the teachers uh, felt the way that I did about the kids, especially the farmer kids children and the things that they needed. And uh, so that's kind of what motivated me to quit being a teacher and to become an organizer. She began with the community service organization in the 50s, lobbying for changes in California for Latinos. Uh, we passed a law that uh, you could vote in Spanish that you could get your driver's license in Spanish. It was through that early activism work she met Cesar Chavez. At that point in time, when we started organizing, farm workers were only earning like 50 cents an hour. And, uh, you know, they didn't have the right to organize. There were no bathrooms in the fields, uh, no drink, cold drinking water for them, no respirators. People were being exploited very, very brutally. That's when Huerta's focus shifted. But then when we started the United Farm Workers, and that was a whole different story because then you were talking about conflict, right? You were talking about workers who were demanding better wages, the right to have a union. A mother of eight children at the time, Huerta's work with Chavez meant moving from Stockton to Delano. It was a very, very hard decision. My kids were in school and uh, yeah, it was a very, it, it was a very difficult decision, but one that I internally just felt driven that I had to make that decision. Chavez and Huerta organized workers for years to demand better labor conditions. We organized people in their homes, house by house, house by house, all over the San Joaquin Valley, starting all the way from Bakersfield to Stockton. Then in 1965, thousands of workers went on strike. In 1966, workers embarked on a 340 mile march to Sacramento to fight for their rights, eventually even getting the support of U.S. Senator Robert Kennedy. And they really brought national attention to the organization, especially when we needed it. Kennedy became a close friend to Huerta and ally to farm workers, even coming to Delano, going head to head with Kern County Sheriff Leroy Galen about the arrests of workers on strike. How can you go arrest somebody if they haven't violated the law? They're ready to violate the law, in other words. Huerta was by Kennedy's side in 1968, the night he claimed victory in the state's Democratic presidential primary, the same night he was killed. When we were coming down from the podium, he was supposed to come with me and we were going into the ballroom while the farm workers were waiting for him. We had this great mariachi waiting for him. And instead, they said, no, Senator, come this way. Instead, Kennedy was taken through the hotel a different way, where he was assassinated. The thing that I felt guilty about was that he didn't have any security with him. It was not just a tragic loss for the Farm Workers Union. It was a tragic loss for all of the United States of America and for all of the world. But Huerta and the farm workers continued on. And in 1970, the United Farm Workers reached contracts with growers, the first of their kind in the United States that ended the Great Boycott. It gave them a chance to negotiate with our employers uh, to negotiate for better wages, to negotiate for better working conditions. And then, of course, we had a medical plan for the workers. And I think that was the ultimate goal, is to be able to get the workers uh, the kind of benefits that other workers, uh, other union workers have. And the farm workers had been deprived. It's a victory that Huerta says she regrets not rightfully taking more credit for. Now, I had organized the boycott. I negotiated the contract. But the day that it came to take our picture and the signing of the contracts, uh, I was sitting next to Caesar, and one of our vice presidents, Larry Eaton, came up to me and he said, uh, would you mind uh, if I sit there where you're sitting? So I, I got up and walked away and gave him my seat. And then when the pictures came out, I said, oh my God, I don't show up in any, any of those pictures. There are no women in that picture. Today, Huerta continues her work as an activist and organizer through a foundation of her own, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, advocating for women just part of the foundation's mission. I think us as women, now, sometimes we don't take credit for our leadership, and I, I have been guilty of that myself. But we have to do that because uh, so many young women 
and, you know, they're in this, kind of in the same space, and we have to teach them that they have to stand up and take credit for, for the work that they do. In recent years, the foundation spearheading controversial change in Kern County, filing a lawsuit to change Kern's Latino majority voting districts and changing school discipline policies that the Dolores Huerta Foundation claims discriminated towards black and Latino students. But Huerta says she hopes the legacy she'll be remembered for is helping people find their voice. I am an organizer, <laughs> and uh, that I hope more people will become organizers because I think we're the ones that can go out there and teach people uh, that they have that they have power, that they that they can make the changes, but that they have to become activists. It's why President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012. She has fought to give more people a seat at the table. Don't wait to be invited, she says. Step in there. And now, as California recognizes her on Dolores Huerta Day, she credits the honor to those who have stepped up to the plate to fight for change. I think it comes on the backs of many people that did the work. Huerta says it's because of tomorrow's leaders she has hope for the future and why she says she can't slow down. This is what we want to do is develop those people at the ground so that they can improve their communities because they shouldn't have to wait for somebody to come in and do it for them. They have to understand that they have got the power to do it for themselves. I'm Alyssa Flores, 23 ABC Connecting You.